Welcome to Module 2 of this course. The Module 2 will talk about the autocoid pharmacology. For the outline of this presentation, the first part of the presentation will be the definition of autocoids. We'll also deal with its physiological functions, the major classes of autocoids, the pharmacologic modulators of autocoids, and the summary of the presentation. This presentation aims to describe an autocoid and discuss how it differs from other hormones. It also aims to describe the physiologic functions in the major classes of autocoids and identify the pharmacological modulators of autocoids. How do we define autocoids? So the term autocoid is derived from the Greek word which means self-remedy. So the word autocoid comes from the root word auto, meaning self, and apos, meaning remedy or healing substance. It is also defined as chemical mediators produced by a wide variety of cells in the body, having intense biological activity, which act briefly at the site of synthesis and release, so they can act on the adjacent cells. They are also known as tissue hormones or local hormones. So they are formed, released, and inactivated within tissues. They are usually vasoactive. So when we say vasoactive, they affect the blood vessels. And they are also considered to be mediators of inflammation. How do we differentiate autocoids from other hormones? So these substances differ from other hormones in the following points. First, Hormones are produced by specific cells, while autocoids are produced by a wide variety of cells. So for example, of a hormone is the thyroid hormone. So thyroid hormone is produced by a specific endocrine gland, which is the thyroid gland. Another is hormones are transported through circulation to up on distant target tissues, while Autocoids act at the site of synthesis and release. The third difference is that hormones generally act slowly, while autocoids act fast. These are the physiologic functions of autocoids. The first, autocoids modulate the blood flow in specific tissues. Second, some autocoids modulate the secretory processes. So for example, one of the major autocoids is histamine. So histamine has a role or it, it modulates the gastric acid formation in the stomach. Third, it also modulates the smooth muscle function. And autocoids play a key role in allergy, inflammation, smooth muscle function, pain, and certain types of drug reactions such as during anaphylactic reaction. So for the clinical relevance of autocoids, so they are involved in several physiological and pathological processes, especially during injury and immunological insult. They are also serve as transmitters or modulators of the nervous system. So this slide demonstrates the classification of autocoids based on chemical structure. So the first classification of autocoids is the biogenic amines or the amine autocoids. So this includes histamine and serotonin or 5-HT, 5-hydroxytryptamine. So the second classification of autocoids are the polypeptides. So under the polypeptides, we have the plasmakinins, verdikinin, and calidin. We also have the angiotensin. We also have the VIP or the vasoactive intestinal polypeptide and the substance P. The third classification of autocoids are the lipid-derived autocoids. So under this, we have the icosanoids and the PAF or the platelet activating factor. The icosanoids include the prostaglandins, eukotriins, and the 
thromboxanes. So other examples of autoquoids are cytokines and gastrin. So these are the classification of autoquoids based on their chemical structure. Autoquoids can also be classified based on their origin. So the first classification of autoquoids based on origin are those autoquoids that are derived from precursor molecules in the plasma. So the autoquoids under this include the kinins, not the plasma kinins, and the angiotensin. We also have those autoquoids that are preformed and stored in the cell. So example of these are histamine and the 5-hydroxytryptamine or the serotonin. We also have those autoquoids that are derived from pre precursor molecules in the cell membrane phospholipids. So under this includes the eicosanoids, you know, the prostaglandins, leukotrienes, thromboxanes, and the PAF or the platelet activating factor. We also have uh, the, the pharmacological modulators of autocoids. So these autocoid modulators interfere with the synthesis, inhibit the release, or inhibit the receptors upon which the autocoid acts. So what are examples of the pharmacological modulators of autocoids. So these are the autocoids and their pharmacological modulators or their antagonists. For histamine, so examples of uh, histamine antagonists include the antihistamines, you know, the H1 blockers and the H2 blockers. For the serotonin or the 5-HT, 5-hydroxytryptamine, this includes the serotonin antagonist and the serotonin blockers. For the angiotensin, we have the angiotensin blockers and the angiotensin converting enzyme or the ACE inhibitors. For the prostaglandins, we have the inhibitors of the synthesis of the uh, prostaglandins which include the NSAIDs or the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. We also have the leukotrienes. So for the leukotrienes, we have the leukotriene antagonist and the lipoxygenase inhibitors. In summary, autocoids are biological factors which act like hormones. They have a brief duration of action and they act near the site of synthesis. They are synthesized and released locally and they play a role in vasoconstriction, vasodilation, and inflammation. So some of the common autocoids include serotonin, bradykinin, histamine, and eicosanoids. Autocoid modulators interfere with the synthesis, inhibit the release, or block the receptors upon which these autocoid act. So some of the examples of the autocoid modulators that are commonly used are paracetamol and aspirin.